How you doing, YouTube? Matt, Massive Beer Reviews, back to yet another review. A little bit more upstate New York, hopeful goodness, in the form of Fifth Frame Brewing. It is their down up. Um, this is a, uh, as they would put it, juicy pale ale, coming at 6% alcohol by volume. Yeah. Um, never had anything from Fifth Frame before. I know of them because of my buddy George. He goes up to the kind of... Um, Northwestern New York, upstate New York, Rochester, Buffalo area quite often. These guys are beast out of Rochester, I believe. Yes, Rochester. And uh, yeah, I've heard some things, some, but we're going to kind of form our own opinions. Um, as far as what else it says on here, it says fifth frame, juicy pale ale, 6% alcohol by volume. That's pretty much it. Fifthframe.co. Down up. And uh, yeah, it is your quintessential hipster geometric pattern can. I like it, but it's also very kind of, you know, what you'd expect from a lot of breweries that would say this is a juicy pale ale. So, yeah, what do we have going on here? I just washed this glass, but it looks like it has a little dirty glass mafia going on. Could be on the outside, though, because I didn't give the outside a good scrubbing, but I gave the inside a proper one, too. So we'll see what happens here. Uh, give that a, a semi-aggressive pour that ends up uh, generating a gigantic head. I didn't throw it in all too aggressive. But I could just see that head just kind of generating regardless. So I'm like, yeah, throw it in there a little bit, see what's what. I used to pour my beers all the same for you guys so you can get an idea of how those heads kind of work. But, yeah, that kind of takes too long sometimes. But, yeah, super poopy pour. Um, what do we have here? Uh, actually pretty creamy in the middle, but super rocky in the edges, as you can see. You're also getting, you're all, uh, already getting a little bit of kind of lacing on it with super rocky edges on it. Just kind of neurotic, crazy, super deep, viewable bubbles. And it, it has that haze going for it, you know? It's that soft, rich, um, kind of, not super orange, but more kind of like washed out, sunny D-like kind of orange vibes to it. So, she's hazy, but I've seen hazier. It's going to do if I can. Probably going to snort some foam in this one. That's how she do. Yeah, there's a um, peach component. Yeah, big, huge peach candied component. I mean, it's just overrun with like a sweet kind of like when I was talking about like a Sunny D vibe. Okay, imagine if they made Sunny D but with peaches instead of like oranges. So it's getting to that kind of not super candy confectionery sweet kind of thing um, when it comes to the peach for, uh, portion of the show, but it's definitely beyond just a regular kind of peach peachiness. You know what I mean? Like it, it's beyond a normal kind of sweetened robust kind of ripened peach it's more has a little bit of uh, added sugar to it um a peach juiciness if you will like i said like the sunny d vibes i think that's it that's all i'm really getting on it not really getting much better there's a little bit of soft kind of um like tartness to it to be perfectly honest with you and there's just a you know a, a rich kind of sweetness that just kind of carries that peach that level i was talking about done and done let's dive in cheers Okay. Not nearly as sweet as I thought it was going to be. Has a bit of a, a kind of a graininess to it. Almost like there's a little bit of kind of slight, slight kind of smokiness to the graininess, to be perfectly honest with you. Yeah. Like a light smokiness to it. It's almost like a little bit of a like lager vibe from it, too. The way I'm getting this kind of slightly kind of funky, sulfury thing off the... Um, I typically do off kind of lager yeast. There's a bittering component. Definitely kind of in a kind of um, tomato stocky green vegetal kind of variety. That peach carries through, but not nearly as big in the taste, not nearly as sweet. A little bit more like kind of under ripened kind of peachiness. Yeah, done and done. Yeah, there's there's like um the way that spiciness of the hop, that combination of that kind of tomato sockiness with a little bit of spiciness kind of marries with that kind of what I thought was gonna be really sweeter kind of peach peachiness based off the nose, but it ends up coming off as an unripened peach. It comes off very green, not necessarily in that kind of way I talk about green hop pellety wise, but more kind of underdeveloped kind of greenness. 
an immature kind of greenness, if you will, when it comes to it, the way the fruit is showing in front of the house, the way the kind of um, green portion, I keep throwing green out there, I should probably use a different word, you know what I'm talking about, that both the green hot portion of the show and the fruit portion of the show while on the nose is ripened and bright and sweet, ends up coming off um, uh, not even bittering, like I said, kind of like under ripened. Um, if you've ever had a piece of fruit that's just like, it's just not fresh yet. It has that kind of rawness to it, that green rawness that, um, that is, uh, just, I'm not going to say it's unpleasant, but it's just not, you know, there's growth to be had within the fruit or the food or whatever you're trying to eat or drink. And that's the kind of vibe I'm getting here in the taste. Yeah, it's a weird beer because I don't think I hate it, but I don't like it either. It's giving me like... A bittering portion of the show it almost kind of wants to go another level and get a little bit tart get a little bit sour and get into the kind of like a sour ipa or, or a tart uh berliner vlacy kind of fruited portion of the show but it's not it's just a straight up kind of hazy beer but as an added portion of the show i'm really surprised there's no kind of added addition to it beyond the core four ingredients so i assume that's just coming from you know the malt profile and how they brew it maybe a water thing it just has this kind of I keep going back to that sulfur component, maybe. Maybe that's it. It could be a carbonic acid thing, too. But it's just, there's a, a bittering, tart kind of thing. It's not overt, but it's there. And it's kind of keeping the beer from getting to where it wants to be, to where it should be. Um, because the way the nose leans and the way the nose kind of kind of tips the hand of the beer just doesn't go there. And I understand there's, a, there's a, you know, sometimes there's a cool kind of juxtaposition between the way the nose plays and the way the beers plays. I feel like this is more of something whether it be kind of the way the malt profile or more specifically the way the carbonation or something like that comes off or the yeast maybe any of those um it just kind of misses the mark for me ends up coming off a little bit too bittering but not in a hop kind of way like i said like carbonic acid when it comes to come to a carbonation kind of thing yeah it's it's not a bad beer by any means, a stretch of the imagination and there's really good tidbits to it it's kind of missing a little bit of um finesse for me and kind of keeps it from getting kind of next level um it's my first far right in a fifth frame um uh you know i haven't had anything from it before i have this one i have another one in my fridge that i am going to give a whirl but you know it, it, it let's cut to the chase is it one of the better pale ales i've had as of late no vegan availability no idea if my buddy gave it to me george brewery only i assume and leave you with if you like what we like this it reminds me of kind of like a small foamy kind of beer than the foam brewers out of Burlington, Vermont. Um, it, 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 I taste potential in it. I taste goodness in it. It just seems a little bit too, I don't want to use the word sloppy, but not as finesse. It lacks finesse. I mean, that's kind of another way of saying sloppy for me to kind of tie it all together. I, 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 but I can taste something in there. I can taste some goodness in there coming coming in there. So if you like what we like this, if you like a brewery that's giving a hefty cut at the hazy game and is close. I mean, I still have another one beer, to, uh, another beer to go. This is the only one I've ever had. You're going to judge a brewery on just one beer. Hmm, more times than not, you're not going to. But um, I can't wait to dive in the other one and see what the other one's all about. But um, yeah, not a bad beer by any means, but at the same time, there's some growth to be had. There you go. Another review in the books down there if you want to talk about it. Massive beers if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff. Beer Massive if you want to check me out doing the whole podcasting thing. And hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully enjoying a nice little fifth frame beer right now. And hopefully see you next time. Cheers.